Yeah. Not working for the man. Sleep till noon, set your own schedule. Freedom, great stuff. Okay, Lee, today we're gonna to talk about jumping off the cliff. Talking about <laughs> jumping off the cliff going pro. And I think many people out there can empathize with that idea, probably are sitting there with that idea right in their heads as they're watching <laughs> like, this video. Yeah, it's a great dream to have all your time to yourself and that is the dream. I love to work and before we get started, I think we should at least give these people kind of a background very mm -hmm. quickly of where we're coming from in this discussion. Okay. You go first. So, yeah, I jumped off the cliff in 1990. I, I had adopted the professional mindset a while before that, but then I quit my job at the time, which was a musician. So I full-time grinded from 1990 to about 2005. Mm -hmm. And then for the next five or six years was like half-time grinding. And then the last 10 years has been like just a couple hundred hours a year, but I still take my A plus game to the table when I play. Right. But I did grind for, for many, many years in there before I started coaching. And uh, that's pretty much my history. Okay. Um, I have never been a pro poker player. And you know, some people are like, really? I'm like, no, I, mm -hmm. I am too risk averse. I've uh -huh. never jumped off the cliff, don't ever plan to jump off the cliff. But I've been what I'll call pro-adjacent mm -hmm. for about right. 20, 25 right. years now. I mean, I have know a lot of pro players. I've mm -hmm. been around them. Right. I, I was living side by side with right. them for a long time. So what does that mean? I mean, people might not know what your poker star's history. You're talking about like- Well, I worked in the poker industry mm -hmm. and I was writing in the poker industry and being and playing a lot. Mm -hmm. During the years prior to that, you know, I wrote Winning Low Limit Hold'em in 1994. So for 25 years now, right. I've been very close to the poker world and I've, I've right. been around a lot of pro players. So but you have, were never even tempted to... Uh, oh, really? Yeah. No. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, we're coming from totally different totally places. Totally different places, yeah. but let's, let's talk about it. Okay. What would you say are the, the big upsides of of being a yeah. pro? <laughs> well, freedom. I mean, just calling your own shots day in and day out. And the excitement. I'd say that as a client sometimes, I was like, if somebody were to give you 50,000 a year, if that's what you need to make as a pro, mm -hmm. and somebody would just give you 50,000 a year, would you quit playing poker? Well, heck no. Right. You know, okay, and then I'll say, so let's say you, you played poker 30 hours a week, and you absolutely knew for sure you were gonna make exactly 50,000 a year. Would that take the fun out of it? And they're like, yeah. Yeah. So it is the unknown. It's right. the thrill I mean, of the unknown. The variance. But that is really, really attractive, right. that thrill of the unknown. Mm -hmm. And then the other part that was very attractive to me right from the beginning was just to be able to do it. If you ever did it, know it, look at me, I'm self -employed. And that had great appeal to me. Mm -hmm. It's very much a meritocracy. There's no office politics. Yeah. There's no who you know or anything like that. It's like either you play better than the next guy right. and have better discipline and better habits and all the other stuff that goes with it, or you don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lee, so let's say, this, is, this should be interesting, like the advice we might give to somebody, given our background. Right. So let's say somebody comes up to you, they're you know, 28 years old and they're like, I really don't like my job. It's not going anywhere. I think I've got a halfway decent poker game. Should I just quit my job? What should I do? Wow. <laughs> I, have, I have a lot of different answers to that. Part of it is I would need to have more information. Right, like, for sure. Do you have a family, a mortgage, responsibilities, <laughs> things like that? Right. If you do... Um, well, no, let's just stop there because that comes right to the heart of it. Okay, let's, say that, let's, let's define the person as being fundamentally unhappy with their work. Take this job and shove it. So that's a key thing. It's like if you're already unhappy and you become a pro and that makes you unhappy, well, you're still just fundamentally unhappy. Right. I mean, you didn't win or lose the, in the happiness game. Right. That's Which the matters, whole idea. The well, it does matter. So if somebody really hates their job, then that makes it a better play, in mm -hmm. theory, for them to e at least take a shot right. at being a pro. Right. So this really gets to the difference of how we might approach this because you're looking at it as like if you have financial responsibility, then, then you should just keep that job you hate. 
I, uh, it, it would, is that it what would you're be saying? A, it would be a factor for me. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, that's really kind of cuts to the to the chase of it. Is like, are you willing to not only take risk with your own financial future, mm -hmm. but if somebody else is also dependent on you, right. you know, they're in on it too. Right. So that's what makes it kind of hard. I do want to say that when I left the engineering business mm -hmm. and went to work in the poker world, I finally understood what all my total engineering geek buddies were experiencing, which was absolute love and devotion to their careers. Oh, I mean, I was perfectly happy. I was fine yeah. being a, a software engineer. Right. But when I turned my love of poker into my job. It oh, was, I it see was what you truly mean. truly an epiphany. Right, right. So I totally get somebody who says, I yeah. hate yeah. my workaday job. Yeah. And I love poker. See, to me, I'm, I'm in favor of jumping off the cliff when it's reasonable to do so. Right. And that's why, because it's worth the shot. You know, it's like you were, what you were telling me about your son. He's like, he has to take a shot at being a professional musician. And even if it doesn't work, he has to do that so that he doesn't regret not trying right. later. Right, absolutely. And if you're, if you're really going to regret not taking the chance at pro poker when that window opens, mm -hmm. that in itself can be a reason yes. to try Absolutely. And, and, and I think we agree about that. There's absolutely no way to know if someone has what it takes to survive without a safety net until the net is gone. Right. If somebody can play and have their stats for a year and show that they've won this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. But until the actual pressure is there that yes. you have to win, that, that just changes things. That's Absolutely. why the, the areas I work with people that are interested in jumping off the cliff is nothing to do with betting strategy. It's mm -hmm. all that other stuff that can sink your ship. Right. Bankroll issues, tilt issues, lifestyle balance issues. You know, once somebody goes from having a job, that might be one of the things that you would fear is like not having the structure. Right. To keep just to keep your days lined up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard. It's really, really hard. So what are the things that we would encourage somebody to think about if they mm -hmm. are thinking about jumping off the cliff? I, I think one of the ones that doesn't get thought of enough is bankroll right. itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say, uh, let's define a person as maybe a little older, 40 years old, already had a career, done what he wants to do or she wants to do, ready to move on right. to poker or whatever else. Right. So this is someone who's kind of got their shit together, let's right, say. Right. They don't need major uh, protection against self-destruction and all that. Right. They just want to make a rational decision. Mm -hmm. And what I suggest to them is if you are starting any business on your own, would you think twice about getting funding for that business outside of your household if you needed to? Right. You know, and that's standard if you're starting a business. Mm -hmm. So what I tell somebody if they're planning to go grind 2-5, which I believe is the absolute minimum stakes you can actually make a viable living at. And so let's say somebody is aiming to be a two, five, five, ten player. Mm -hmm. I tell them, look, you need 50 grand. It, get your startup capital for your company. Mm -hmm. And that money is like a carpenter's hammer. You have to have it and you have to have a lot of it. Yes. Not just because you need it to make money, you need it for the mental stability. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs some mental stability to survive as a pro. And having a fat bankroll is one of the things that's controllable. So Absolutely. I've actually advised people to go borrow, you know, 50 or 100 grand to jumpstart their bankroll right. if they're going to go pro. Something else you'd have to consider is where you're going to live. We live in the Bay Area, which uh -huh. happens to be poker heaven. Mm -hmm. There's only one problem the cost of living is higher than anywhere right. else in the United States. So when I was moving from Columbus, I had a choice, Vegas or here. Mm -hmm. And there were several other factors that made me come here. But the games, they're definitely softer than Vegas. And so I think if you actually do the math, you could actually make a case for saying that your expected earn rate here is higher than Vegas by roughly the, the same as the cost of living is different. I actually do think it's still possible to grind for a living 
in, in the, the Bay, Bay Area. Area. Now, you might have to shack up with five other degenerate <laughs> poker players in a one bedroom. What's but it can wrong, be done. What's wrong with it? <laughs>so crazy being a pro because you have to wager amounts of money that are so out of line right. with your daily and monthly nut. So you do actually have to be relatively stingy, mm -hmm. okay? And stingy in all ways, meaning you want your commute to be short. Yes. You, you, know, you want your rent to be low. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you need to be looking out for all these things. I mean, to give you an example, I remember when the rake went from three bucks to four bucks. That basically was a pay cut for me of $8,000 a year. Wow. Because I went about wow. 8,000 pots, and so that was a dollar extra. And at that time, I was, my expected earn was, net earn after everything was 40 to 50,000. So when they raised the rake, my income went from 40,000 a year to 32,000 a year overnight. Now, that's the type of mentality you have to have, or you will have. If you go right. pro, you can't not have that because that becomes your life. All of these little things and they really, really add up. And it's just crazy when you have to put 3,000 on the table every day and then at the same time be watching every little expense. But right. that is what it takes to really make it long range. Now I'm talking about grinding at the mid-range level. You know, because we're ostensibly talking to one, three, and two, five players who might want to go pro. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about going up into the nosebleed levels or playing higher stakes online or getting staked for big tournaments, that's another type of professional life mm -hmm. that neither of us has experience right. with. Right. One thing that I would like to discuss is things that I'd want people to consider before they jump off the cliff. The fall will probably kill you. Would you make a jump like that you didn't have to? You want to die? I can't swim! No, it'll be okay. And again, this comes from somebody who is fundamentally risk averse. Right. And I'm never going to jump off the cliff. But I think these are right. just perfectly logical, rational things to consider. Okay. Let's say you go pro, all right? You no longer have a vacation plan. Right. You no longer have a 401k. You can put money into an IRA, but nobody's going to match it for you. Mm -hmm. Health insurance. Mm. You know, if you're in the United States, there's no guaranteed health insurance for you. Well, I've got a kind of a funny little spiel on this that you haven't heard. I Tell me about it. Back before the explosion, when I'd be in regular company and people would say, you know, what do you do for a living? I play poker for a living. Got a lot of different reactions. But some of the questions I would get all the time, people would say, well, what do you do about taxes and what do you do about health insurance and what do you do about retirement and my stock answer was well taxes i pay them mm -hmm. health insurance i i buy it and retirement retire from what the games change this is another big mistake and i did this all the time is you look at the current situation and you think it's static right and none of it is. It's always changing. You have no idea what games people are going to be playing, what stakes they're going to be playing, where you're going to be playing. One of the things that I have truly seen over my 25 years in the business mm -hmm. is how much better the players have gotten. They'll kill us. And it's just like, yeah. like this, right? Well, it, First it was the books, and then it was the videos, and then it was the training sites, mm -hmm. and now it's the solvers in GTO. Right. And every single step. Yes makes the game tougher yeah. and harder. And you're not gonna be able to say, okay, now I have the skills, and now I can just settle in, and I have a guaranteed income for life. Right. Because the players are gonna keep getting better, and if your game doesn't improve along with them, yeah. you will get left behind. And, and that's why uh, health, you know, mind and body stuff, has become more and more important. It's always been important, but the reason it's more important now is because a lot of times there's not as much differentiation in the skill level. Right. And so the advantage goes to the person who has more stamina, like in football. Right. Right? And that, that's why that has become more important, because more and more people have, have, are learning the betting skills up to a certain level, and now it's just a matter of... You know, right. Fortitude. And so the point is, is that you're having to find an edge wherever you can get it. Yeah. And if you're getting eight exactly. hours of sleep and the other guy's getting four hours of sleep, right. well, if you have the same basic poker skills, then you're ahead of that guy.
And if you're not doing the health stuff, you're behind all the people who are. Right. So it's just a matter of keeping up with the Joneses, so to speak. <laughs> <As it were. laughs> So, what would you say to take away from all this is, should you jump off the cliff? Should you not jump off the cliff? I think, if in doubt, jump. Oh, 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 shit! If everything else is lining up and, and you're like, okay, this is the time, and I'm gonna regret it if I don't do it, and I think I've got the chops for it, and I'm gonna go for it, and, and especially if, whatever your current income is, is either bad or miserable or you don't like it. Right. You know, it's funny because literally when we started rolling this video, I kind of thought I was going to be the Debbie Downer. <laughs> and I yeah. was going to say, no, don't do it. Right. Blah, blah, blah. Right. But you know, the more I've discussed it and the more I've thought about it and the more I think about to my experience of jumping into the poker industry, mm -hmm. even yeah. though it wasn't as a pro, Felt good though. It felt yeah. amazing. Yeah, to be doing something that I loved. Right. And getting paid for it. Right. That's what it's all about. That is really what it's yeah. all about. And so, if your eyes are open and you're going into it for the right reasons, go. Go for it. Go for it, <laughs> and then leave a comment down below <laughs> and tell us what it's like. <laughs>